Hello everyone. Today I'm going to do a study analysis on a beam um, using CATIA V5 to show you how to do basic uh, study analysis. So I have a clean slate right now. I have nothing here. You want to create a part. Um, just go to file, create, click new. Uh, then part select OK. Um, you, you're gonna need the workbench that's um, part design that's over here. I mean, here. Uh, click sketch, click YZ plane, and click uh, this guy. And just drag. Delete that. Uh, actually, want uh, when the rectangle that's corner at the origin. I think this is twelve. So change this to twelve. And change the height to three. <coughs> now you want to create another rectangle, something like that. Uh, then you want to draw a center line. Vertical is the vertical center line. Uh, you want to select these two edges over here, and also the uh, the center line. Click uh, constraint, click symmetry. Now the center line is in the middle of the uh, rectangle. Uh, click this edge and this edge. Select the center line. Do the same thing. Um, that's good, but we need to change this out. Sorry, need to change this out. Hmm. There. Um. Yes, uh, that looks okay. We can uh, dimension this too, but it, for demonstration purpose, I just leave it as it is right now. Select OK. And we're going to click Pad to create a beam. Make it a little bit longer so it actually looks like a beam. Select OK. Um, go to the right. Now we want to add material onto this beam. Uh, you can see you can select, uh, just cl click over here, apply material. And uh, you can see uh, all kinds of material. For now, I'm going to select aluminum. And select the part and click apply material. Select OK. Now the material is added to the uh, part. That's all right. And then um, we want to click start. Uh, select the part first, then start uh, generative structural analysis. We're going to do a static analysis. So click OK. Uh, it's it's an uh, finite element analysis, so the whole purpose of this is to simulate uh, the uh, stresses and the uh, deformation. The way the computer 
uh, does that is to uh, create a lot of elements. Um, so, um, so then they do analysis and simulation based on the uh, elements. But now uh, we can see this element is rather big. Uh, we want to shrink that down because uh, because small smaller the element, the more accurate the result. So we want to click this. Actually, click this, and then double click. <coughs> now the size is five millimeter we can change this to two to make it more accurate we can see the element uh, shrunk uh, that will give us a more accurate result um, now we want to cram one side click OK uh, just you just need to find this command called clamp. Um, then we want to add the force, distributed force, onto the edge of the other end. This end is clamped. We want to add the force on this end and this edge over here. Uh, over here you can change the direction of the force I just show you if it's not the right direction you can just add the negative to, to change to the opposite direction see uh, if I change that to 150 Newton the arrow is going to change it's just you just add a minus over there right now and then the force is uh, acting down like okay okay uh, then you, you need to calculate click calculate click all it's gonna give you a uh, information about uh, how much uh, how much time it needs to run roughly. If it's the the run time is too big, there's something wrong. It sh just make sure you have the right estimate estimation of your your time. Select yes. Okay. Um, now we want to. Um, go to the right. Uh, we want to add this. The stress. This will allow me to see the stress distribution uh, over here. You can see uh, the actual actual value of the stress. Uh, the 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 red one is about eight about nine times ten to the seven newton per meter square, and you can see the stress is localized over here. It makes sense because we put a force over here and now the beam is bent. Over here we'll, we'll uh, uh, experience the largest stress. We can click this guy to see how it is actually deformed. You can change the speed if you want. Another good information is um, displacement. 
Uh, there is this guy. It's called displacement. You can just add displacement. You can click on any arrow and then select average ISO. I think this is a better uh, uh, better uh, representation of the uh, displacement. Please note the uh, displacement is the vertical displacement. It's not the uh, uh, it's not delta L or uh, so. It's just the vertical displacement. See the displacement the the values are over here. You can see it's in millimeters. It's actually very hard to visualize by naked eyes. Uh, same thing we can see the animation and see how the displacement is uh, formed. Very close and let's go back to stress like okay and over here click information just click anywhere on the beam okay it will tell you the maximum stress the beam has right now the maximum is 8.94 uh, times 10 to the 7th Pascal. Um, yeah, it's about right. It's the uh, the red area over there, maximum uh, stress, and you can see the U strength is nine point five times ten to the seventh. U strength means any uh, if the uh, actual stress exceeds the U strength, the beam will deform, like a plastically deform. When you when the load is un, uh, when the load is uh, released, it will not go back to its original length. It will suffer a plastic deformation if the maximum stress is uh, larger than the U strength. For now, we are good. Oftentimes, I do this kind of analysis to see if uh, the beam is uh, plastically deformed. That's always bad news for your design or structure. Uh, actually, you don't even want this maximum stress to be close to uh, to use strength, the safety factor is normally 0 0.5, so you can optimize your design to lower your maximum uh, stress. Because this this is static analysis. When it's dynamic, this maximum stress may change and uh, exceeds the use strength. The safety factor is uh, 0 0.5. That means uh, the maximum stress shouldn't uh, be larger than half of the yield strength. So I'm gonna close this one. So I'm gonna.